Hello, my name is Bree, and today I'm going to be showing you how a mycelium syringe can help you grow mushrooms at home. So, whenever you order one of my syringes, it'll come to you in a package very similar to this, and there's two things that you're going to want to look for inside of the package. One of them is this syringe itself. It'll include the draw date. And the batch number, this batch number is important for me if I ever have to look up um, the genetics on your order, if you have any questions about it. But anyway, you'll get this syringe and you also need to look for one of these packets. It's got the card in it, it's got a sticker in it, but also for every syringe, you'll get an alcohol swab and one of these sterile needle packs. Now today, we're gonna to be doing a demonstration using this pink oyster uh, genetics. Let's go ahead and pop it open. So what I do is I just open the side, kinda of pinch it open and let it fall out. Here we go, this is what she looks like. Now let's see if we can get the camera to show you the mycelium that's in there. I'm on kind of a funny ring light situation right here, but if you can kinda of see Right in here, this is full of what kind of looks like a white aloe drink. <laughs> that's the mycelium, that's what's actually gonna grow your mushrooms. We're going to inject some of this into a sterile grain bag. Specifically, this one, okay? Uh, you can make these yourself, a lot of people do. Um, if you want the instructions on this, I am gonna make a series on how to make these bags. You can also do them inside of jars. But today we're just going to use one of my pre-made grain bags. But if you have an injection port, be it bag or jar, the process is pretty much the same. So this is a one pound bag. So the rule is, one cc, so this much, per one pound of grain. You can double it, but I would encourage you to be careful about adding too much liquid to your grains because when you do, that's when you open yourself up to a higher contamination rate. Okay, so we're gonna start off with opening this alcohol swab and going ahead and wiping down this injection port. Now you're going to want to let it sit for about 30 seconds. Go ahead and use a little bit of it to get on your hands. You can use gloves if you want to, but it's not strictly necessary. If you don't have gloves, it's okay to not buy them. It will still get a good success rate without them, okay? So, now we've gotta attach the needle, but first, let's go ahead and give this a jostle. If you're not sending this into a huge grain bag where you're sending the whole thing in, then you're gonna wanna shake it up, okay? And this is how I do it, okay? I'm going to hold it like this, expose the lure lock, expose it on this side too, go ahead and twist it on there, okay? And now that this has had something close to 30 seconds, we're gonna go ahead and inject. Pull it back. Lay your cap down. And cap it this way, okay? And that's all you do. So over the next couple of weeks, this mycelium will expand out depending on how hard you inject it. It'll either start expanding around the injection port. Gravity might bring it down and it will start growing here or if you really shotgun it into the bag, it'll start just colonizing right here on the back of the bag. All right, and that's how you get your mushrooms started using the mycelium syringes. Now, if you do not use all of the syringe at one time, the way to store them is to go ahead and put it back inside of its little plastic sleeve that it shipped with, and you can store this in the refrigerator for about three to six months. Now, there are two genetics that I sell that do not love being in the fridge. Um, it is too cold for them, and that would be the pink oysters and the golden oysters. Those two varieties 
do better sitting on a shelf or inside of a drawer somewhere out of direct sunlight but still not not below like 50 degrees okay those we just leave those on the counter and then also if you want to store your mushroom genetics this floaty bits in here for longer than three to six months that's when we start talking about making them into agar plates or turning them into slants. That will be a separate video, but that's how you would want to go about storing them for a year or potentially longer. All right, I sincerely hope this video helps. Um, if you are interested in getting any syringes, I will drop my store link down in the description. The best way to do it, uh, cost efficiency wise, is to get the three pack, specifically the three pack, that's what you will see listed. Um, also, if you are interested in growing mushrooms and you want to see the process and kind of learn the steps that you have to take to get those really big flushes of gourmet and medicinal mushrooms please consider following my channel um, i try to update as often as i can as i grow mushrooms myself and kind of show you the process of how i run my little micro farm that we're doing out here okay thanks again see you guys when i see you bye mm -hmm.